Hey everyone, before we get started, I just want to let you know, this is part two of a two-part series. If you do want to watch part one first, there is a link to it in the description below. If you've already seen part one, then each knee sunshine, yo! Let's go on to part two. Hey, want to know a secret? Dungeons and Dragons doesn't exist. Never has. No, that game that you've played and loved for hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands of hours? That's Dungeons and D-Dragons. What does it mean? Who made it that way? How expensive is a name change in the grand line? Seriously though, what does it mean? If you've asked yourself those questions, then you're in the right place. Because I too desperately want to know if there's rules for that. First up in our count of grand line crewmates with an astounding bounty of five, no wait, 10 whole dollars is the cotton candy loving chopper as a Pathfinder build. What do we want out of everyone's favorite raccoon de er, er, reindeer? That's what I said, reindeer. Well, ambitiously enough, we want a way to shapeshift into seven, that's right, seven different forms. All right, well, we'll start as just like, you know, a person, man. Hey, that's one! But what kind of person? Ah, here's our first trick. We'll take the very little talked about skinwalker race for our second transformation. There's a whole bunch of different heritages to consider, each of which lets us partially morph with various aspects and elements of different animals. My very first inclination is the Night Skulk, which is to say were rat kin heritage, as that lets us boost our int, which we'll need in a second. But that does give us a bonus to hiding. And well, while Chopper isn't the bravest, hiding is not his strong suit. As a possible alternative to that, Coldborn, i.e. Werebearkin, have wild empathy and calm animals, both of which aren't too off track. In any case, that's two! All right, on to classes. And oh yes, I did say classes, because we're taking a bunch. First up, Shifter. Well, that just makes sense, right? Whether or not it's strictly the best way to get either of these next abilities, it does give us both Shifter Aspect, a la Hunter, and Wild Shape, a la Druid. And that's three and four different ways to transform so far. Next on our list of professions, Alchemist. This does a few jobs for us. First, hey, there's that Doctrine ability we need. Make sure to grab Infusion so you can hand out those elixirs of Cure Light Wounds, yeah? Next up, it means we can use a Wand of Monstrous Physique for form number five. And hey, can Alchemists even use wands? You betcha they can. And maybe most importantly, they can use mutagens to bulk up into unseemly, horrifying abominations. Who has a cute little forbidden rumble? Chopper has a cute little forbidden rumble. That's six! We're real close now, so what closes us out? Well, while our monster point a second ago has the honor of being called forbidden in canon, this last one has the infamy of probably being forbidden at your table. That's right, for our seventh and final transformation, I'm suggesting the Synthesis Summoner. Now, if you don't know exactly how to break the game with this class, I'm not gonna tell you how in this video, but you know, I probably will in a future one. That said, I'd imagine the crazy mix of stats and angles you'll have to bend together to get this build working will dial you back just a tad. Moving right along, Devil Child Nico Robin is the stoic archaeologist and ancient history expert of the Straw Hats, and is probably the only person in the world who can speak mega Latin. So she's basically perfect. All right, let's see that checklist. She most definitely needs to be able to read any language, and she needs to be able to use the only mildly traumatizing limb sprouting power of her Hana Hana no Mi to assault and hold people from afar. Since she gets this boon from the Sea Devil, why not look into Warlock? There is a playtest patron called the Aberrant Lurker, and it is a literal sunken sea god who will give us Grasp of the Deep, which allows us to summon attacking tentacles anywhere within 60 feet of us. It happens to state that we can flavor these appendages of the deep any way we want, so arms it is. At level three, we can pick a boon, and while we won't exactly need the extra cantrips, for flavor reasons, we definitely need to take the Tome Pact and the aptly named Book of Secrets. At sixth level, we can use our extra arms to protect our allies and ourselves, and at 10th, we can restrain anyone in a 10-foot radius with a blanket of these appendages. Now, we will have to ignore the swimming bonuses that our patron gives us, as Devil Fruits mean that swimming is a no-no. Now, for spells, we need Eldritch Blast, of course, which for us will mean making arms violently spring out of people's bodies and then even more violently wail on them to deal force damage. Next, we can take Comprehend Language, so that no matter what language we come across, we can, uh, comprehend it. And Tongues, a spell that will let us extract more info on the true history of the world by communicating with literally anything. And rounding us out, let's emulate Robin's finesse at boosting her mobility while depriving enemies of their own with Spider Climb and Hold Person. For invocations, we can twin up Repelling Blast and Grasp of Hadar to push or pull the targets we hit with our Arm Blast. And the temporary HP from Fiendish Vigor will give us a little more hardiness for when we WANT TO LIVE! We get a feat for being human, so we will, of course, be taking Linguist for even more languages, some extra intelligence, and the ability to create ciphers that will let us securely send messages without the prying eyes of the world government catching wise. The Observant feat allows us to read lips, increases our int once again, and gives us a plus five to perception investigation rules to boot. Finally, the Hermit background gives us the Discovery feature, which does nothing, except turn us into a walking plot time bomb. A plot bomb, if you will. It's a pretty full build, but the Hana Hana no Mi translates through it well and comes across strongly. Coming in hot, hot, hot with our next Pathfinder build, we've got the singular best soldier for the rock and roller color wars, 
Frankie. Now, what do we need on our very own Cuddy Slam checklist? We want A, a cyborg, duh, with B, a strong right, C, a weapons left, D, some aptitude at putting together some crazy stuff, E, a little more durability than standard flesh offers, and of course, F, one radical beam. We'll be diving into some pretty uncommonly used material here, but it's all pretty straightforward. All right, first off, we're gonna be an android. Definitely an easier way to become an artificial human than getting hit by a C-train, am I right? Now for the rest of this, we'll be using the technology guide, the Pathfinder companion that ended up being a precursor to Paizo's other tabletop system, Starfinder. Which, speaking of, to all of you asking for Starfinder content in the comments, don't worry, I hear ya, it's on the short list. For our class, I don't think we need anything more complicated than just a fighter here. First off, that's gonna give us all the feats we need to get some crazy stuff set up. For instance, personally, I think that lunge plus improved unarmed strike is all we need to stand in for strong right. Fighter also lets us take the cyber soldier archetype, which gives us bonuses to implanted weaponry. What's that? Implanted weaponry? Oh yeah. We get to implant some weaponry. So, you know, maybe take exotic proficiency firearms with all those feats you got lying around. It's gonna be expensive, but hey, Consider it a perk of being the head of the Frankie family crime syndicate for so long. For weapons left, let's implant something fairly traditional, like a revolver. If we're gonna use the technology guide, I'm gonna go out on a cybernetic limb and presume that advanced firearms on the table, you know? Ah, but in our other arm, let's implant something spicier, much spicier, like a death ray, eh, eh? How's that for radical? Okay, okay, as I hear GMs across the globe gather their <coughs> For collective, yeah, no, that is exactly why I don't allow the technology guide. You can always just go for a laser pistol instead. Still pretty radical. We can finish out our implantations with some dermal plating to give us that extra little bit of resistance we need to become Frankie Invincible. Lastly, we need a guy who can make stuff. And not just any stuff, but all the stuff. Like say, ancient invincible superboats. So two routes to go here, depending on how you'd like to play it. You can either take the technologist feat and then whichsoever craft technology feat you like, or you can take master craftsman and then angle towards crafting wondrous items, even without magic. Sidebar, want to know more about how crafting works? Like it all? Well, you're in luck because next month's video will be all about that stuff. You know what I think that makes this guy? Super! Brooke, the humming swordsman and captain of the ill-fated Rumbar Pirates has an eye for adventure and an ear for song. But actually, he doesn't have any eyes or ears. <laughs> this 90-year-old fencer and master of acute angles needs to A, be able to fence with the best, B, battle with the power of song, and C, absolutely must be a skeleton. While there isn't an official skeleton race in the Pahaba, Volo's Guide to Monsters outlines how to use the abilities of any monster stat block to make a monstrous adventurer. Going by that, we get to give plus two to any stat like a human, but instead of the feat, we gain immunity to exhaustion and poison, which is, you know, a little ironic since that's what did Brook in the first time around. But we do gain an extra weakness in bludgeoning damage, and that does make sense. Next, to combat and sword and song. Well, this is easy, say it with me now. Bard! Oh, but not just any bard, a bard of swords! <laughs> the College of Swords gives us the dueling fighting style and blade flourish. The flourish gives us 10 extra feet of movement when we attack, plus we get to pick from adding to our AC with every hit, slashing through two enemies at once, or even physically repositioning the target as we just walk right through them. You've already been cut. Of course, the sword is just half of a bard. The music is the other. So let's yo ho 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 over the options for spells. Sleep is a must for any musician, and with the help of his electric guitar, a thunder wave power chord isn't out of the ordinary for this soul king. We've definitely seen Brook cast calm emotions, and on Fishman Island, even hallucinatory terrain. Brook is also undead and has mastered the cold ice of the underworld in his swordplay, so we want to take the feat Magic Initiate to gain access to Frostbite, Ray of Frost, and Ice Knife. Now, let's throw on some magic items to tie up any loose ends. We don't want anyone to have any bones about this build. Yo! <laughs> it says I'm supposed to apologize for that, but I'm not gonna. A ring of water walking allows us to dash across the ocean with ease, just as Brooke does now and then. We've also got Soul Solid, the most badass cane sword of all time, TM. But since we have so much to cover here, you can find that in the PDF below. All right, so from this point on, we are getting into spoiler territories. If you have not seen all of Whole Cake Island, stop here or forever be okay with spoilers. Are you still here? Okay, I'm gonna spoil the next straw hat. I'm gonna do it in three, Five, eight, it's Jinbei. Jinbei is the next draw. So, okay, there you go. I hope you, I hope you enjoy being spoiled. I told you to stop and you didn't, did you? You didn't, okay, all right, let's on to Jinbei. Knight of the Sea Jinbei has quite a track record. Former captain of the historic Sun Pirates, ex-warlord, former member of the Big Mom Pirates, ex-inmate of Impel Down, and current helmsman of the Thousand Sunny. This whale shark's been around the Grand Line and through his honor and mastery of Fishman Karate, he's managed to find a way into our hearts. Jinbei is a man of principle, so checklist item number one is a code of honor. Number two is a martial style that can control water and deal damage with our fists. And number three is that he must be a fish man. We can have that much covered with the Triton race. Along with giving us a swim speed and the ability to breathe underwater, this lets us cast Wall of Water and Gust of Wind once per day at level five. And on top of that, we can even communicate with aquatic beasts and gain a resistance to cold damage. Nice. nice. Now, 
I'm pulled in two different ways. We can become a paladin, to be an honorable knight of the sea, or a monk, to be a master of fishman karate. How about both? Let's take seven levels of paladin, specifically for protective elements like lay on hands, aura of protection, and the defense fighting style. As a fishman of regrets, we can take the Oath of Redemption to defend our allies and make sure that any future Arlong won't go unpunished. Our channel divinity Rebuke the Violent allows us to reflect damage back at anyone within 30 feet who tries to harm our Nakama. An Aura of the Guardian allows us to take damage of any crewmate within 10. Oh, and on top of all that defensive stuff, Paladin means we get to add smites to our karate later down the line. The spells Hold Person and Sanctuary will also allow us to keep all our backline navigators and sniper kings safe while we're busy doling out punishment to those who dare threaten our captain and crew. On the monk side of things, everything comes together at level 6, when we get d6s of martial arts dice and gain our key empowered strikes, which, like armament hockey, will let us hurt even the spookiest ghosts and Logia users with magic damage. The monk school Weight of the Elements gives us access to Shape the Flowing River and Water Whip, both of which bring the power of the sea into our combat. We are, after all, helmsmen to the future king of the pirates, so finding water shouldn't ever be that hard. All right, let's add it all up. With three attacks, a smite on each one, and our flurry of blows, we can deal 5d6 plus 68 damage in a single turn. That seems like damage fit for a former Shikibukai, wouldn't you say? Finally, as one last tool for keeping our friends safe from harm, we need to take the Sentinel Feet. With it, anytime an enemy attacks one of our allies within 5 feet of us, we can make an opportunity attack to stun their movement and tell them exactly where they can shove their sake cup. And we did it! One Piece is a wonderful and never-ending D&D campaign of a show. And with these 10 Straw Hat Pirate builds, it can become an exciting and never-ending D&D campaign in your life. And who knows? We may get another Straw Hat someday, and you can bet we'll be back to cover them too. But until next time, may all your tales be full of laughs and all your dawns be full of romance. Yo ho ho, yo ho ho, yo ho ho, yo ho ho. Ta da! Hey guys, we would like to give a shout out to the uh, sponsor that made this video possible, DiceDungeons.com. Uh, we've talked a lot about their dice before. You know, they've got great acrylic dice, great metal dice. But today I'd also like to talk about these cloth battle mats, which are super, super cool. They're really shiny. The art is great. You can just bunch them up, throw them in a bag. Super easy. You can use it as a pocket square. You're just like, oh, you think you're into D&D, &D, huh? Well, then just boom. Roll initiative. That makes every wedding better, I think. Uh, go check out DiceDungeons.com and use the code DOORMONSTER at checkout. All right, and now it's time to address all of your comments that you put on the last video. There weren't that many comments about the builds on the last video. Maybe because we uh, uh, we debuted it on November 3rd, and I don't know, something was going on that day. I don't know, something. First off, a lot of you mentioned a webcomic called Grand Line 3.5, which is uh, uh, apparently the premise is that a couple of D&D players are playing a campaign, and they decide we're not going to be Marines, we're going to be pirates. And it's like, what if all of One Piece World was a D&D campaign? Which is a pretty cool premise. I've seen that done a couple times before with like a DM of the Rings and Darth and Darths and Droids, and those are both pretty cool. So check that out. The other one everybody brought up was that uh, uh, YouTube rapping phenom Rustage and personal friend, he was on my podcast, does a uh, One Piece themed D and D podcast. And absolutely go check that out. It's super super cool. Um, and tell him, tell him that I sent you. And 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 tell him, tell him that he needs to rap about me. Yeah, tell him to rap about me. I'm the best anime protagonist. Why don't I have a rap? So yeah, go check him out. Other than that, go ahead and leave all of your comments on uh, these builds and the builds from last time here, and we'll talk about them next video.